Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fairfield City Hall. This is our Inside Fairfield program that will uh, be for the next 25 minutes. We'll be speaking about issues inside of Fairfield that uh, are affecting our city at this time. And uh, I am Mayor Ed Malloy. This evening we have a very delightful topic to discuss, and that are that is two different projects that will be taking place in Fairfield this summer that will enhance the uh, quality of uh, recreation for our young people. And uh, my first guest this evening is the director of the Fairfield Park and Recreation Department, Barry Dodd. And of course, everybody knows Barry, and we appreciate uh, you coming in tonight, Barry. You bet. Thank you for this opportunity. Good, thanks. Well, I know uh, we're just going through our uh, budget process, and we're uh, not quite done, but, but fairly close. You have a number of um, uh, projects that uh, your department will be working on to expand some of the recreational opportunities in the city. And uh, I'd invite you to talk a little bit about those, but then we also want to talk about the um, Partners for Play 2 project, which would replace uh, playground equipment in Chautauqua Park. So give us a little bit of a background on that project, Barry. Okay, great. Um, it all started a, a few years ago, the uh, existing equipment at Chautauqua Park, which mm -hmm. was so generously donated to, the, by, to us by the Kiwanis, um, the Fairfield Kiwanis, many years ago, mm -hmm. um, started to wear out. And uh, the Kiwanis did a great job, as they always have done, of supporting us. Um, the, the equipment had been there over time. It, uh, you know, we got its good life out of it. Um, it was just really past its life existency. So we had to take a look at it. We patched it together for the last few years, and then we finally decided that um, it was no longer up to the uh, current standards for public playgrounds. So we did remove the playground last summer just to make sure, last spring, to make sure that there were no um, injuries. And of course, the safety is the number one, um, the number one topic that when it comes to playground equipment. So with that equipment being out, of course, there was a need to uh, come up with new equipment to replace it. Everybody mm -hmm. knows how important um, play is in the, uh, in the development of children. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of people from the public who went out to Chautauqua Park all the time, inquire about that, and they mm -hmm. certainly understood that the playground equipment, you know, needed to be removed, and they offered to help if we were going to look at um, replacing the equipment because they know how tight the budgets are and things like that right. lately. So we did get a, a, a committee together to uh, do some fundraising to get this uh, two nice new pieces of uh, playground equipment at Chautauqua Park. Chautauqua Park is one of our most important and uh, very popular parks, and we have a lot of kids there in uh, um, events, activities, reunions. We got any equipment in there? Absolutely. Barry is probably our most uh, used park. Would you say during the summertime? Is that? I would say it's pretty fair close to say. To that. Okay. Yes, you know we have Obi Nelson is used a lot too. We have some other great parks, but. Um, day in and day out, from a number number standpoint, Chautauqua probably does have the uh, attendance wise. There. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, Partners for Play One was very successful because there was really a, a good groundswell of support from the entire community to um, to make that investment, and I think people were very, very pleased with that. And also, the other part of that project was that it was constructed by um, the volunteer. Uh, hours That's put correct. in by a lot of people in this community. Is this project going to be done similarly? This project is going to be done just a little bit differently okay. when it comes to the uh, installation of it. Um, we're doing a lot of things the same way except for the installation of the equipment. Um, the, uh, this equipment will be installed by um, as much as it can by in-house and contractual people with consultants. Okay. So. Uh, we were focusing on um, getting the funds together, getting the equipment there, and uh, having our staff do what we can to, to put the uh, to put the equipment in place. So, um, you know, the the partners for one, the partners for play original project was great. We had volunteers, right. and it was just a fabulous project. And that's why we decided to call this play this committee partners for play too. Just you know, going on the continuing that uh, by making advancements for children and uh, being being able to get them some great play equipment. Right. Well, and I think that's one of the great assets that we have in our city are some wonderful city parks and the uh, equipment and the shelters and everything that uh, goes into it is something that 
really uh, does weather and age over time and is something that we really do need to look at replacing from time to time. So this is, mm -hmm. I know that uh, place that was very important to my children and, and I know it's going to continue to be for generations. So I'm glad to see that this is being done. Brian, maybe we could ask you to um, uh, get your camera on our board over here. And Barry, if you could describe um, what we're what we're looking at. Sure. If you if you take a look at this component system, this will go where the um, original playground equipment was taken out, which is sort of by um, south of or north of Shelter House Number Two and by the A-Frame Restaurant there. So it's a very popular place. Okay. We have over 40 individual components play areas on that piece. Um, it's going to be a little larger than the old system, but you can see there are all sorts of play things on there. It includes a lots of new features. There's going to be a track climber on it or a track slider on it. There are going to be um, sort of mini rock climbing walls on it, double slides, um, suspension bridges, um, chin-up bars, all sorts of things that are going to be lots of fun. There's tunnels in it. Children really like tunnels. And the equipment is going to be uh, top line. It's very um, ADA. It's ADA um, qualified. Great. meets all the requirements in that area. Great. What materials is it made of, Barry? Um, the component systems, actually, the, the frames are going to be steel and metal with PVC coated. The actual slides and the, and the uh, other pieces of components are going to be a, a very engineered plastic. So it's going to be very, very sturdy, will last a long time, will not fade for a long, long time. Okay. Um, it, in, in fact, some of the pieces actually have over a 100-year guarantee on it. Fantastic. Not the whole component system itself, because everything wears out, but some of the pieces actually do have a 100-year guarantee right. on it. And you said we got how much life out of that last uh, it was, set? It was over 20 years. Over old. 20 years. You, right. Would you expect that this could last longer this than 20 years? This will last at least three times as long as that. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. With proper maintenance and care, and the proper maintenance and care on this is going to be, the maintenance is going to be hugely reduced because of it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. And Chautauqua Park also uh, just became connected to the Jefferson County Trail System, so we've added an enhancement in that area as well. Um, so this, this project is going to be uh, funded in what way? Well, we are um, seeking donations through um, the public and corporate businesses, and the project will just really get us started, and we're over a third of the way there, okay. and uh, we think that's great. We're getting a lot of support, and we're really just getting started on great. it. Now, uh, are you, do you have any part of this project in your park and recreation budget for we this year? We have, a, we have just a little bit of in-house um, groundwork and things like that that we're going to do. Okay. The rest of it is going to come from donations. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. And we'll also have another piece that we're going for that will be by Shelter House Number 3, which is a brick house. And that will be a smaller, more linear section on the other side of, of Shelter Number 3. And that will be a nice piece, too, because that's a very popular place, and there's really nothing. The few pieces of equipment we have there also need to be removed. Okay. So that will be happening this spring. Okay, very good. Now, uh, I know there's one uh, kind of exciting spin on the fundraising, which is your Polar Plunge. Right. And talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what, the, uh, what that is. The first annual Polar Plunge will be Saturday, February 26th at Waterworks Park. We're generating a lot of a lot of excitement about this project okay. and right now I've heard about so many people that want to come out and watch <laughs> but I'm not so sure about all the people that want to come in and participate and it's going to be lots of fun for uh, just a minimum fee you can sign up for it you get your sponsors to, uh, to help on that and you get a wonderful t-shirt that's great that's going to be a supplied you're going to have we're going to have lots of fun out there people are going to go take the plunge in Waterworks Park and um, of course you're one of the ones taking the plunge Barry absolutely okay you bet very I'm looking good forward to it who else is and, uh, signed up that you're aware of well Steve Beltramea is going to okay. do it I've heard that Dave Neff is going to do I, it. Dave Neff is going to do it I know okay. I've, I've seen his so, pledge card so some of the lists are coming in and uh, we're getting very excited about that but good. we need a lot more people to sign up to take the plunge with us okay if I can do it I think anybody can so okay that's a challenge to all my there's friends. a challenge if you're not going to um, you know, if you're not, just come on out and get signed up for that. We'd really encourage it. Great. Barry, tell us about some of the other uh, programs you have planned for this year. Well, we've got a lot of great programs going mm -hmm. at the Roosevelt Aquatic Center mm -hmm. and the Roosevelt Community Recreation Center. We're finishing up our volleyball leagues right now, our adult mm -hmm. leagues. We're also in the process of planning 
Our, our summer brochure will be out before long, and we're going to have lots of great new programs this year. Of course, we have our, we'll always have our uh, standby programs. Our soccer program will be huge in the fall, and uh, we'll have uh, all of our youth summer programs, our day camps. We're going to have an explorer's camp this summer, all sorts of fun programs like that. And our swim lessons, we'll be getting them scheduled before cool. long, too. And everybody knows how important swimming is. It's very important to get your children into swim lessons. Our instructors do a great job, and we really encourage you to do that. Great. Barry, also, could you talk a little bit about the um, condition of our indoor and outdoor pools at this point? I know uh, when you made your presentation uh, regarding budgets to the city council, there are some issues and some concerns there. How are we doing in, with those two facilities? Right. Overall, at our Roosevelt Aquatic Center, I believe, is going on its 13th year now. Okay. Um, overall, it is in great condition. Mm -hmm. However, over time, you know, you need more maintenance. And we do have a couple things that we'll be working on this summer during our annual shutdown. Um, we will be looking at the grout that uh, holds the tile into place. Mm -hmm. On the floor of the pool, we had to close for about six days around Christmas time. And we'll take our, uh, to take care of a spot to prevent it from getting further, which we did. Okay. And uh, to prevent any further damage, or we'll be looking at that real closely. And then just regular maintenance items um, at the, you know, the circulation pumps, the filters, those kind of things need continual maintenance. And every okay. so often, you need to do a lot more work on them. And uh, you have to spend a little bit of downtime now, but it's going to make your pool last a lot longer in the future. And uh, we're fortunate enough to uh, to have the support and been able to do that. So overall, our um, our Roosevelt Aquatic Center is in great shape. That, like I said, over, you know, it's on 13 years now, so there are some things that we are starting to need mm -hmm. to replace, and that's why we've, ad we've addressed some of them in the budget, and we'll continue to do so. Okay. And our outdoor pool, of course, was built in 1968, mm. and um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's done a great job of, um, of providing a, an outdoor swimming um, facility for us, but it is starting to show its age in, in many areas, the deck, the condition of the deck, the uh, main circulation pump and the filters are our concern. We continue to do with, to do the best we can to make it operational, and we have, and we will continue continue to do so. But um, eventually, you know, we need to look at um, at uh, doing something in that area. Great. Mm -hmm. Of course, the water slide that we purchased a few years ago is in very good shape, um, still working fine, and uh, we have that nice addition to the facility there. Great, Barry. I also understand there'll be some work. Some uh, continued work being done on developing the beach at Waterworks Park. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure exactly what's planned there. Have you uh, had any specifics on that? We're or uh, just finishing what was projected last right, year? Right. We're sort of finishing up those things. We're going to continue to make advancements in that area, make uh, our signs more visible. I believe they're looking at adding some boat docks, some docks and ramps and right. things like that, and getting things um, a little more user friendly out there. So we're looking right. forward to making advancements in that. Uh, in that area, I would just make one plea to the public: please follow the posted rules out there, because yeah. safety is uh, our overall number one concern, and it's very important that everybody follow the rules there. Good, good Be advice. Safe for everybody. Great. Well, thanks, Barry. We really appreciate the uh, and recognize the value of our park system and what you and your department do to take care of it. It's nice to be able to add uh, these uh, amenities in our parks that uh, really do replace very, very important things that we've had in there for many, many years. Uh, with the advances in uh, materials and construction, it's great also to know that this will last two to three times longer than the last time it was. So right. congratulations and good luck with this project. You bet. Thanks, Thanks so much we for coming in tonight. Thanks a lot. appreciate your support, of the, you know, support by the council, the board, and the public. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Okay. Now I'd like to uh, invite in to join us uh, John Ozimek. John is... Uh, executive uh, director and uh, former president of the Fairfield Little League. Uh, John is really the backbone of the Little League. If anyone has been involved with the program from uh, coaches to board members and uh, John is another person who is always looking after the uh, welfare of uh, Fairfield's youth and uh, commits himself and hundreds and hundreds of hours every year to the Little League program. We have an outstanding program. We serve a record number of children in this community and have for years. John, welcome uh, to Inside Fairfield. Thank you very much for You're having me. You're very welcome. Uh, should I sit over here? So Actually, yeah, this is good, and I'll, uh, unless you want to sit over here to... Uh, just so I could show my uh, okay. chart here. Let's get this board down, and we have another project. 
Yeah, uh, our big goal is is in 1957. Mm -hmm. and we're this, looking at the Little League field here, right? Looking at a diagram of the Little League as, as it, it is, is now. Today. And the black areas here are the three fields, but these were the two original fields uh, constructed in 1957 and 58. Okay. This one here was added in uh, 1994. That's a T-ball field, correct? T-ball field, mm -hmm. right. And this is for the younger children, right. five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, this minor field is for seven, eight, nine, tens, and this bigger one is for eleven and twelves. Now, as time has gone on, the original structures around this area from 1957 have uh, decayed to a certain degree, and it's our uh, goal to go ahead and repair everything that you see here in orange, from backstops to uh, bleacher backings, which are now, their safety issues are very, very uh, important anymore. And so on a lot of these bleachers, we have to put backings, we have to put new backstops in uh, here and here, new fencing along this. And then uh, with the eye, so w when you look at all of this here, you think, well, this is, a, this is a large job. And it is, but we have to maintain what we have because, uh, and this was the area up until two years ago, and two years ago, we purchased uh, 2.1 acres next to uh, the present facility that we have here. Now, what this 2.1 acres is going to do is add about 120 more parking areas because here we only have about 35. Here's about another 20. We can fit about another 15 in here and a little bit here, a little bit here, and then we abuse the residents on East Adams tremendously. But what uh, we're going to be able to do, and what we're in process of, and we just started piling today, is to use all of this for parking, eliminate all the problems on East Adams, and create a girl softball field. Now, this softball field is very, very important for a lot of reasons. This, is, this field, when it's built, will be for girls ages 7 to 18 or 19 years old. This field is going to be used by Little League, but also is offered to ASA and also to the high school programs. Now, Bob Bradfield from the high school is going to be involved because it takes a certain composite for the infield. And then on this area here, which is going to take about an extra year because of the ditch that's here, mm -hmm. we're going to put a practice field, and Bob's pretty high on this. He really would like to use this. Okay. But this thing here is going to be offered to, like I said, ASA and the high school. Now, just recently here in the past month, we have signed uh, kind of a loose association. We're meeting in March. Mm -hmm with uh, 14 surrounding towns, uh, going from Bloomfield to Hedrick to Stockport, in which we're forming an association in which every facility in that area, there are 19 teams, mm -hmm. every week there'll be four to five teams being uh, playing here in Fairfield. So in the overall scheme of things, over this one season of five weeks, We'll have 228 additional girls coming from out of town playing here. Okay. Our girls will travel to a small degree, but like if they're playing Bloomfield, uh, instead of going to Bloomfield to play, they'll play in Eldon. Okay. So this way the, it'll be a little easier. And is this, you, again, you're saying this is through the school system that they'll no, be doing no. this? Or this is just, this is ASA? Uh, no, or this is, this is Little, Little League. League. Okay. 10, 11, 12 year old okay. Little League. And we found out that the three counties around us were in the same predicament we were. So a month ago we all got together. We've talked about it for several months. So we got together and we said, hey, let's work on this thing together. Now, everybody's having registration by the second Saturday in, in March, mm -hmm. and we're going to get together the third weekend in March and solidify the scheduling of all of this. At the same time, we're going to work with ASA, and uh, this field will not be ready for two years. Okay. 
Okay, we'll still have to use this field. The biggest problem with this is sodding the outfield. Right. It won't be leveling, it won't be fencing. It's just putting it putting the grass in, growing right. the grass. So that's the biggest problem here. But as of today, we started the tiling program here to get this parking area, or at least about half of this, completed. Drish Construction started in, and they're going to tile here and here and have that done in a couple days. Then we're coming down here with the city right away and putting two, two foot pipe in so that we're going to use the city's right away for additional parking. Okay. So we're going to tremendously increase it and I'm hoping that on East Adams we can put signs up that say for residential parking only because these people have been great overall. Great. Right. They really have and I know from serving on the Little League board probably 10 years ago or more when I was coaching mm -hmm. girls softball that um, it really has been a dream to expand the fields down there. There is always an issue with, uh, with having enough fields and really the ability to attract uh, some of the tournaments that take place around the state. Maybe you can talk a little bit, John, about what this is going to do in terms of giving us an, an opportunity well, to uh, bring more people to our community through Little League or ASA. I mean, the, whole, the whole scheme of things because, uh, just like I said a month ago, four counties got together. There are 19 teams in these four counties. Mm -hmm. There might be 20 if agency ra raises one. Mm -hmm. And every weekend, there'll be a round robin at five areas. And so that's going to bring in four to five tournaments each weekend in the Fairfield. And we'll rotate in and out 228 girls during this five-week period. Right. Okay, so that's a done deal. That'll be solidified by the third weekend in March after everybody in the areas have had registration. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is in the last five years, during uh, July, uh, we hold tournaments here every week. Right. And last year alone, we had 484 players come from out of town, from Sheridan, Newton, Mount Pleasant, mm -hmm. Bloomfield, uh, boys and girls, and we run tournaments here every, every weekend in July. And we had 484 kids playing. And last night, and I went to the Ways and Means Committee and explained, you know, like everything we're trying to do to, to grow. Correct. And last night, we just got the bid, and we will be running the St Boys State Championship here this year. This year. In July. Right. That's a five-day process. Starts on uh, July 23rd, runs five full days. And I called you last night. You told me about Dave. So we already called the Tourism Committee up. Right. FPAC, Sioux Castle. We're, we're, uh, Chamber of Commerce is involved now. We talked to Barry Dodd earlier today. So what we're going to try to do is try to make this a real big issue. Utilize everything that uh, the city and the clubs have tried to do, you know, I don't know how many things they've been involved in, but this is going to be something that they can ex we can experiment with, right. improve on. Right. Maybe we could have a parade. Uh, the first day is going to be a huge picnic in the evening. Great. And well, you know when, the, and that's you know we talked about this years uh, ago when we uh, started to talk about a hotel motel tax because those are the kinds of things that really support your Convention and Visitors Bureau. It really is about bringing people to community and having them stay overnight and while they're here really getting the best advantage of them in terms of seeing your community. So they're here for a tournament, um, John, but what you're saying is it gives us an opportunity to really show off what we uh, have here in Fairfield. And that's what we need to do and, and while we're here this field here will not be used. Okay. okay, so we need to talk to different groups. They could put up displays, arch crafts, uh, maybe some tents, depending on how the okay. weather. They'll have to prepare, or we'll all have okay. to prepare for that. And then uh, part of this parking will be done because I'm really. Pushing, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm hoping really that some of your parking will be done for that. We'll You'll need it. Phil Drish, God yeah. bless his soul, he, he says, all right, okay. we started today. And uh, so we'll have to do some parking, you know, it's going to be a little bit, but eventually, uh, I don't know, it won't be ready for this, but we're going to have a walkway in between okay. two, 
from this parking area. It'll only be about four foot. That'll make it a lot more convenient for people to get there. That's convenient. a long walk around the fields. Right, but this area here can be used uh, on Saturday. Uh, there'll be a large picnic, so we'll have uh, oh, an entrapped group. Okay. So that okay. we can go ahead and do that. And then on opening ceremonies on Sundays, we could have a, a parade if we wanted. Okay. So. Well, it's a nice idea, and I know you have uh, a, a group representing a lot of the different elements of town, the city, Chamber of right. Commerce, Convention and Visitors Bureau, Park and Rec, to get together to have a planning meeting to talk about well, we how we, how we do that. We these yeah. new groups that we've got right. and, and Good. let them come forward Good. and help out too because we need their help and it's like anything else. This whole thing is run by about 10 people. Right. And, and so we need as many volunteers. Right. And, okay. And, you know, whatever anybody can do, volunteer, whatever it is, we really can't because this whole project is very costly and very little has been right. uh, put away for labor. Right. Okay. Well, John, we're uh, City Hall sort of filling up here for our meeting coming up. Uh, I know that we'll, we'll wind this up, but just to, let, uh, to say that I know this is a um, project also that is going to be privately funded. Um, you're, uh, you have a campaign going on to help fund this as well. Why don't you talk just a little bit about that before we close up? Well, what we, we've done is we've gone to some of the corporations, we've gone to some people, we've sent out 400 letters to individuals to ask for, you know, assistance. Right. And uh, I'm hoping that you know they can come through because we'll be borrowing a huge amount of money right uh, right now five individuals own this land right and that land is going to be given to the city <coughs> free of charge right and, and it'll all be part of this is actually Pumphrey Park right and so the five of us will be given that to that so it'll be one big complex then and with all this parking and all this other stuff we're 50 years old in two years right Two years, okay. Yeah, and, and we want to set up not only what the new stuff, but maintain the old stuff great. for the next 50. Great. John, this is a great vision. It's a wonderful project. We're happy to see this going on as well. Congratulations to you and the Little League Board for your land acquisition and for your planning here. And we wish you all the best with this project, and we'll do everything we can to support it. Thank you very much. Good, thanks. So we'll uh, finish up this evening's uh, Inside Fairfield and thank our guests John Ozimek and Barry Dodd for uh, giving these presentations on some great exciting projects that will be taking place in Fairfield this coming summer. I invite you to uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll take a break for about five minutes and begin our City Council meeting. This evening we'll be considering uh, our second reading of an ordinance uh, regarding uh, plantings around our fire hydrants. We'll be looking at a uh, safety plan for our Fairfield Municipal Airport. Uh, we'll also be taking public comments this evening on our uh, fire fee ordinance that was passed last time. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and uh, we'll see you again the first, uh, second Monday of uh, March for our program Inside Fairfield. Thank you again.